Christian married couple prioritise their physical relationship with each other in a way that honours God and strengthens their marriage. The first thing we need to know about our love life is to understand the theology of what we are doing when we make love. The church has a beautiful teaching about sex, but most couples in our society think that sex is not much more than a shared recreational activity. Sure, our lovemaking is meant to be pleasurable and fun, and yes, it is an activity in as much as it is, is something we do. But when we reduce it, its meaning to being just about fun or just an activity, we not only fail to understand its full purpose, but we inevitably have less of it. Because here's the thing, good married couples are really responsible people. We have all these important things to do, earn a living, raising the children, maintaining a home, paying the bills, returning those important emails and phone calls. Add on to that the fact that we've had an argument or we're feeling distant because we've been so busy and there's not much by way of romantic feeling, lovemaking just ends up at the bottom of the to-do list. We are too serious for fun and too tired for yet another activity. But God and the church as his interpreter has a much better idea about our lovemaking as husband and wife. The church tells us that our lovemaking is not so much something that we do, but it's something that we say. Sex is like a, a body language, and we're familiar with the idea of body language, that our bodies are expressing meaning. Our facial expressions, my hand gestures, our voice, our posture, our gestures. Everything we do with our bodies is broadcasting what we are thinking internally and feeling to the world, often unconsciously. So our lovemaking is a body language, a very particular intimate communication. So the question is, if it's a language or a communication, what are we saying through our bodies in our lovemaking? The church tells us that lovemaking speaks through the body, the words of the wedding vows. Every time we make love, we are renewing through our body the very words of those vows. And that's one of the reasons why sex across time and so many cultures has been reserved to marriage. It's understood as the physical manifestation of the marriage covenant. Even in secular law, marriage was considered not to be valid until consummated. Our Catholic understanding is that our lovemaking is what distinguishes a marriage relationship from any other family covenant, like siblings living together, for example. Even more, the church calls us to understand our lovemaking as a prayer, a kind of marital liturgy that remembers the vows we made to each other and make to each other every day. In the same way that in celebrating the Eucharist, Christ is made present, body, blood, soul and divinity to those gathered who enter into a one flesh union, so also do husband and wife make Christ manifest in their embrace through their one flesh union. Our lovemaking is both pleasurable and can be fun, but that is not its purpose. It is a sacred body language between us that we share with no other. And as such, it cannot and must not be relegated down the to-do list at the expense of all those other important things that distract us. So how do we prioritise our physical relationship? The first thing to do is to stop thinking of it as just something we do for fun when everything is perfect between us. The jobs are all done, the kids are in bed, the stars are aligned and the moon is full. I've never had that day. <laughs> Instead, start thinking about your lovemaking as the most powerful form of communication we have between us and as a form of prayer. Think of it that way and watch your priorities change. <laughs>